Good morning. Good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is a joy, a delight to have you here. This, the first Sunday in the church's season of Advent. This is a marvelous time in the life of the church. You can see the decorations as we are moving in anticipation in this season towards Christmas. Celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. You'll probably notice that we have some singing today. We, we haven't had any singing for quite some time, but we're going to do some singing today. And we're going to have Mike Lancaster, who will help us with the first part of this hymn, which is O Come, o Come, o Come, o Come Emmanuel, and with the congregation responding with the refrain. It is a joy, as I say, and a delight. Welcome to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be to you. At this time, we will have the lighting of our Advent candle. Come and gather, O people of God. We await the word who will lead all nations. We await the one who will rise in hope. Let us with hope kindle the light of the Lord. We light this first Advent candle, the candle of hope, as a sign of the hope we have in God's redeeming love for us. We seek the Lord at this time with our call to confession, our prayer of confession. We seek the Lord at this time because we recognize that we have fallen, that we have not lived up to the image of Jesus Christ, but we are people filled with the hope and the assurance that God will come, God comes, and God shall come again to help us and move us forward as the people, the body of Jesus Christ. If you will join now in this prayer of confession you have in the bulletin. Almighty God, let trumpets sound to wake us up with knowledge that we slumber, that we are not, not paying attention to your nearness. We have not watched and waited eagerly. We have relied on the certainty of our own past rather than on the promise of your future. And yet, we do seek to live in the promise of your spirit and truth coming into our midst. Lord, prepare us for your coming among us. 
Train our hearts and our hands to be watchful and alert for your arrival. Friends, remember that you were baptized into the life, the death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We are the people of hope and assurance in this Advent season that God has come, God is coming, and God will come again in Jesus Christ. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Let us pass the peace of Christ to one another at this time. Our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Happy Thanksgiving. All right, Claire, sit down. I think it's just the two of us. Are there any other children here? Well, we have to tell we have to tell everybody what we do at night. I guess I'll probably be the one to tell. Before Claire and I go to bed every night, we share with each other one good thing, one hard thing and one silly thing that happened during the day. <laughs> and it's such a good way to think about our day, isn't it? Sometimes it's hard, though. It takes, it takes us a while to go, go through our day and think of one good thing, one hard thing, and one silly thing. But I got to thinking about that, how we do that every night, because it makes us feel good, and it makes us remember that not every day ha it, uh, has everything go perfectly, and that every day has, has a reason to laugh. Clara, did you notice that we were singing today in church? And that was nice. Felt good. It feels good to sing together. Mr. Mike is singing this song that we're all joining in to called O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And it's a long song. It has seven verses, which is why Mike is helping us sing it, so we don't have to sing it all the way through at one time. So we get to hear the verses throughout this whole service. And Ma Clara, did you notice that when Mr. Mike sings, it sounds a little mysterious? And maybe the tune sounds a little bit sad, kind of like the hard things we have during our days. And then when all of us join together, do you remember the word we said? Rejoice. So the song starts to sound a little happy, which kind of makes me think about the good things during the day. Well, let me tell you, do you know what the word Emmanuel means? I told you on the way in this morning, but it's okay that you don't remember. Emmanuel means God with us. And that's what we celebrate this Advent season. It's really what we celebrate all the time, but especially as we wait for Jesus to come, right? We were talking about what Advent means. And I think it's so cool, this song, we can remember that God is with us in the good times, in the bad times, and even in the silly times. Elliot did something really silly this morning, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Elliot wanted to put on your clothes and my shoes over his pajamas. <laughs> it was really silly. And when you laugh like that and Elliot laughs, I know. I think God laughs with us. God is with us in the good times and the hard times and the silly times. So maybe we can think about that when we all sing together.
this beautiful hymn this morning. What do you think? Is that a good plan? All right. Let's have a word of prayer if you will repeat with me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For coming to live among us. For coming to live among us. And for loving us. And for loving us. For being with us in the good times and the hard times. For being with us in the good times and the hard times. And in the silly times, too. And in the silly times, too. Amen. Our scripture passage this morning is taken from the book of Isaiah, which makes reference to this term that Emily mentioned to Clara, Emmanuel, God with us, and how it came to be pa uh, to pass that it is a, a peace that we refer to when we think about God coming in Jesus Christ. The, the situation is that Israel has been attacked by some enemy nations. They have not been defeated, but they are in imminent danger of more attacks. Isaiah has gone to the king Ahaz, and Isaiah asked him to ask the Lord for a sign about what is to happen next, a sign that God will protect the Israelites. But Ahaz says, no thank you, I don't need any signs. Well, in his piety, uh, he gets an, uh, gets an answer from the Lord, and this is what is said. Isaiah spoke to Ahaz, Ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. But Ahaz said, I will not ask. I will not put the Lord to the test. And Isaiah said, Hear now, you house of David. Is it not enough to try the patience of humans? Will you try the patience of God also? <laughs> Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign a young woman will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, come the of Jesse, free thine own from Satan's tyranny, from depths of hell thy people save, and give them victory o'er the grave. Rejoice! Over the next several Sundays in the Advent season, Emily and I are going to do a preaching series on hymns for Advent. 
And this is the first one in that series. Uh, as you know, hymns are, and singing is a part of who we are as the church. They are at the right and left side of the center of our faith, which is our, the grace and love which we have in Jesus Christ. We have always been a singing congregation, the church. The church has always recognized that, that songs help to identify emotions that words by themselves cannot express. They allow us to express our deepest hurts, our deepest joys, our deepest longings. It's very important for us to be able to sing, and we have missed singing in this season of the pandemic, very much so. But we are trying to move forward a little by little, being cautious because we're Presbyterians. <laughs> We've got to do everything decent and in order. We get that. So we're moving out a little brave here because we know about this other virus mutation that's come out. But we are confident. We are still confident. You know, song, songs are very important to us. I don't know that we oftentimes realize how important they are. Do you remember a time when you were feeling low or blue and you started singing a song and it lifted your spirit? I remember many years ago visiting a woman with dementia in a nursing facility. And the conversation wasn't much of a conversation because of her dementia. It really wasn't much of a conversation. But at one point I said to her, Jesus loves you. I want you to remember Jesus loves you. And I don't know, I guess the way I said that, she started to sing. Jesus loves me, this I know. And I went, whoa. Whoa. Oh, I mean, I was just like, whoa, wait a minute. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I thought I was not connecting in any way, shape, or form. But there it was. And she started to sing, Jesus loves me. We sing too, don't we? We love to sing because singing is such a part of our hearts, our minds, and our spirits. So here we are. In this first season of Advent, the first Sunday of Advent, Advent, a simple Greek word which means coming, and we use it to mean the coming of the Lord, the coming of the birth of Jesus into the world, and I hope everyone has come here now uh, fulfill, fulfilled with all the thanksgiving that you enjoyed these last few days. And I mean that word, uh, fulfilling, and a pun, in the most literal kind of way, that you've had plenty to eat, and plenty of, of thanksgiving, and giving thanks, and all that goes with the season of thanksgiving. And I'll remind you again that thanksgiving happens every Sunday in the church because the table we have before us, the communion table, from ancient times is called the, the Eucharist, which means in Greek, thanksgiving. Remember, every time we serve communion, we have the great prayer of what? Eucharist. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. So we are in this season and we're looking ahead. And, and, and Christmas is ahead of us. The birth of Jesus is ahead of us. And that's the key word, isn't it? Ahead. Ahead of us. That's the key word. Because it's, it's, as, since it is ahead of us, we are involved in the preparation the hope and the joy that we anticipate in the season of gift giving, the greatest gift of all, Jesus Christ, born amongst us, who did not keep, think himself so great that he, that he left the heavenly realm, emptied himself even to death on the cross. Yes. So we're in this season of preparation, a season of hope and joy, which, which is a proclamation of the gospel. And so, we have, we have about 28 days, I, I'm counting, before Christmas. I like the way that Catherine last week, I had the calendar, and she said, look, here's December 1st, it's only 21 days after, 25 days after that, <laughs> it's Christmas. Such a lovely thing, her excitement in her voice is so good. So, we're preparing, and we have this song before us, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Don't you just love the way... Angie and Mike have performed it today. Isn't that I just love the way Angie just held that note. 
And Mike, with his resonating baritone voice, <laughs> you know, just, weren't you moved by that? Just marvelous stuff. I want to just say just a few words about the hymn itself. Yes, as Emily pointed out, there are seven verses. And I thought, well, we shouldn't rush through this. Let's not rush through this. Let's take time with it. You know, and so Mike and Angie have done it just so well for us, the way they presented it. I don't know if you have your, your hymn book turned to, to hymn number 88, but if you will turn there, you will see that we have a footnote. We have a footnote for every one of our hymns, and the footnotes are really, really good. I wish we had more space for footnotes. But the footnote, you will notice at the bottom of this hymn, on page number 88, it's not a page, but hymn number 88, is that you have these seven verses and they are all spoken beginning each day before the seven days before Christmas, beginning on December 17. And each one of them highlights a word from the Old Testament and they're known as the O antiphons. Now that's a fancy word, antiphon. Anti means against or, or next to. Anti, against or next to. Against this word, it is then spoken, and so we have this, these phrases. And there's seven of them, and I'm not going to go through all seven of them. That's just too tedious. But to recognize that they would, on December the 7th, speak the word, O oh, wisdom, the words we have here, and so on. The 18th, it would be, O oh, Lord of might. And so it goes on. I want you to recognize that this hymn and, and Angie and the way Mike sang it, the way Angie played it and the way Mike sang it, that you caught it, and Emily mentioned it too, the, the mourning sound, this kind of sad note, this kind of melancholiness about it. It does have that, doesn't it? There is a pleading about these words and, and, this, and the, the melody of the song, Oh, come, oh, come. I mean, there's a depth of sadness there, isn't it? It's heartfelt pleading for wisdom, for God to come, for the desire of nations to come. Uh, they're all personified, all of these terms, these biblical terms. And they all, as we know, relate to the work of Jesus Christ. Now, some of them you may not recognize, like the key of David, for instance, that comes out of Isaiah. It relates to the kingdom of David. It's also found in Revelation where Jesus is the one who, who locks a door that can never be opened and unlocks a door that no one can ever shut. Okay? So he is the Alpha and Omega. He is the key to life. Marvelous piece there. Uh, the root of Jesse has to deal with a descendant of David. Jesse is the father of King David. And so we are looking for one who is a descendant of the house of David, which is Jesus. Just read the genealogy of Matthew or, or Luke if you want to figure that one out. And good luck with that. Good luck with that. But they have this uh, mournfulness, the, the tune, because the world is a place uh, that is dark, a place where wisdom does not reign. God's wisdom does not reign. It's a world that God's law is certainly not followed. We recognize this. And so this song is a pleading, a, almost a, if you will, a dirge. Come. Wisdom, come. Law of God, come. Key of David, come. Come. Be among us and reign, reign among us. The hymn, as I, as I say, has, is not upbeat at all. I mean, it, we don't rush through the words, <laughs> not at all. It's not like, joy to the world, the Lord is coming. It's not like that at all, is it? Not at all. That's a song for Christmas. We are in Advent, waiting Pleading, anticipating, preparing, filled with hope, but also assurance. 
And that's why we have that f- marvelous refrain. Emily mentioned it, and we're doing it so well. You know, Mike and Angie over here, it's all kind of gloomy and dark and mm, solemn. And then we, we pipe in, rejoice, rejoice, you know. That's the antiphon, you hear? It's the word spoken against this other voice. This goes up against it. Yes. There's another voice. Yes, we know the voice of gloom and doom. But there's another voice. It's a voice of joy and hope to be resounded and heard and shouted among us. The Lord will come. What I think captures this, what is captured in this hymn is that God is at hand. God is on hand, but God is not in hand. God is at hand. God has been with us in the past. We have the past witness that God has been with us. God is at hand. God is on hand because we have the word alive and living among us. God's presence is with us right here. God is Emmanuel on hand. But God is not in hand. Because when we think about that, God is not in our hands. The truth of the matter is we want God to take us in God's hand. We want to be subject to God. We want to be the ones who come to God, who follow into God's life, into the life and spirit and word of Jesus Christ. So while we have God is at hand, on hand, God is not in hand, but our hope is that God will place us in his hand. Great assurance, great assurance. You know, I think that's how it is with us. We ever find yourself in a kind of a gloomy place, a dark place, maybe a little depressed, and someone just calls you out of the blue. And they're cheery, and, and they say, Hello, hello, how are you? I just wanted to call and just touch base with you. And suddenly your whole mood just changes. Suddenly you know what's happened. You are in their hands, as it were. And everything has changed. And you're lifted up. It's no longer darkness and gloom, but you've moved to a new place, to a new life. You're born again in some sense. You can begin again. That's the marvelous thing about this hymn. That's what this hymn, I think, does. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. God is all of these. God is... At hand, God is on hand, and God takes us in hand, wherever we are in life. The trick is for us, though, to see this, to come into this. It's marvelous that we have this this hymn, this season when you look out the window and the trees are bare and the shadows are long and not much daylight, the sun barely gets above the horizon and a lot of dark hours, I mean, we need an uplifting. We, and it captures some in the tune, the tone, the tune we have because, well, we know we live in a world that's filled with violence, don't we? There's suffering. There's hunger. There are people fleeing their homes, immigrants all around the world. I have no place to call home. There's violence in the world. I don't have to remind you of that. Just turn on the news. Suffering of all kinds. We know this. We know this all too well. But we are the people who know that God is at hand and God is on hand. And that we are in God's hand. We will not be defeated. We will not be discouraged. We will speak the good word. That's who we are, church. The 
body of Jesus Christ. I don't know if you think about it. We're counterculture. We're counterculture. We don't walk around, oh, it's such a bad world. <laughs> no, we don't do that. We don't do that. We lift up our hands. We lift up our heads. We lift up our voices. And we sing, rejoice. Because that's who we are. Knowing that God is at hand, on hand. God has us in God's hand. But there's one more piece. There's one more piece here to this hymn. This hymn, to my mind, has left out something. Well, who do you think you are, Curtis? <laughs> it calls on God. O come, O come, Emmanuel. O come, O come, God with us. O come, O come, God with us. You could sing that. But what's missing is the call to us. A plea for us to be present. A plea for us to be at hand. For us to be on hand. For us to be eager to be in God's hand. So I've written another verse for this hymn. O oh, come, O oh, come, O oh, people of God. Who journey in this life we have to know the hope that God provides and live our life with the trust in God. Rejoice, rejoice, O people of God. O come to God. In Jesus Christ. Will that preach? Will that work? I think so. You see, it's not all about calling on God to be present. It is also Calling on you and me to come and be present. So here's how it comes down. This is my final remark. Finally, Curtis is going to finish this sermon. <laughs> Whenever and wherever you are, you are the voice, you are the presence of God, the voice and the presence of Jesus. Whenever you are kind and gentle and gracious to other people, in spite of the fact that they can be mean and they can be ungracious and they can be irritating and frustrating, yes, we, you and I, can be the voice and the presence of God whenever we show generosity and kindness and grace. When that happens, truly, doesn't it? God comes. God is with us. And with those around us. At hand. On hand. And we are in God's hand. Amen. Amen. Oh, come thou day spring, come.
advent here, disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and death's dark shadows put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Church, if you would stand and let us affirm what we believe by affirmation of faith in the bulletin. Church, what do you affirm? The Christian church is the congregation of people in which Jesus Christ acts presently as the Lord in word and sacrament through the Holy Spirit. As the church of pardoned sinners, we testify in a sinful world with our faith as with our obedience, with the message of the gospel that we are solely the property of Jesus Christ and that we live solely from his comfort and from his direction in the expectation of his appearance. You may be seated. And I again welcome you to worship here at First Presbyterian Church. And if you'll take a moment and fill out the friendship pads that you find in the pews, I want to just point out uh, a couple of, of things to you in our church calendar. One is that, um, you know, last year we weren't gathering at all for worship during Advent. And so we decided to do a little uh, something different. We had an Advent Vesper service. We had to drive in and sit in our cars and worship in the cold with our heat on and our radios turned in, tuned on. And... Someone this year said, I really like that. Could we do that again? And I said, no, because I don't want to sit in my car and <laughs> worship again. But I do love to sit in the sanctuary, especially as the evening comes. So we will gather at 5 o'clock on Sundays here with the lights turned on for an Advent Best First service, a simple service of uh, song we'll sing and prayer and meditation and uh, maybe also some cookies. So I hope that you or those who you might like to invite to come for a Sunday uh, casual worship can come 5 o'clock each of our Sundays of Advent. We also are gathering after worship uh, during this time for a little taste of uh, coffee and cookies uh, each week. So join us just right around the corner in the Ravenel room, if you will, after worship. Now let us turn our hearts and minds to God in this time of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks and praise for the season of Advent, this season of waiting and expecting. We are not always good at waiting, O oh God. We want what we want when we want it. But you who have promised us goodness and grace, wholeness and healing, love and life, you work on holy time. Your clock is sacred. And so we come to this Advent season with hope that as we wait for your reign to come, we will know the goodness and the richness of this spiritual practice of waiting. We thank you, God, for all that we have waited for and all that we have seen, the truth of your presence in the world, the evidence of your love all around us, and the promise of your steady grace, renewing us and binding us to one another again and again. We thank you most of all, loving God, for the one whose arrival we anticipate this season, our Savior Jesus Christ. In him we find our deepest joy and our greatest hope. As we offer our prayers this morning, we remember especially those who are waiting. We remember people who are waiting for an end to violence, for they have known too much war. We remember people who wait for healing, for their bodies are in pain. We remember people who wait to be free from captivity, for they have been held against their will physically, 
mentally or spiritually. We remember people who are waiting for joy, for their hearts have been burdened by sorrow. We remember people who are waiting for rest, for they have labored too long and too hard. We remember who, people who wait for a home, a meal, a job, for they do not have their basic needs met. O oh God of all waiting, we also pray this morning for the earth that is waiting, creatures awaiting protection because their habitats have been destroyed, waters awaiting renewal because they have been contaminated, air that awaits the cessation of pollution. And we also pray, merciful God, for the ones on our prayer list, the ones who continue to wait for healing and wholeness. And we pray for those not named on our prayer list, but known deep in our hearts, whose suffering breaks us down in sorrow and worry. We wait with them for what you might do to bring relief, peace, joy, and love. We pray, gracious God, with the weight of waiting on our hearts and minds, but we also pray with the light wings of hope that you bring reconciliation and redemption, growth, and new life. Indeed, O oh God, Emmanuel, we rejoice and rejoice, for you are with us in every time, in every place, and even now. And so, with the confidence that we do not wait alone, we join our voices together to pray the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us continue to worship God with God's tithes and our offerings.
As our offerings are brought forward, let us pray. Gracious God, we rejoice at the thought that the gifts we give in love for you might be a sign to someone who has never known your love. That the way that we can offer the ministry of our church to others because of the ways that we can give gratefully with thanksgiving might show someone else that you are with us. So we ask your blessing on these gifts and on our lives, on our hands, our feet, our feet and our hearts, that we might come to you and go out into the world to be signs that you are indeed with us, O Emmanuel. With joy and thanksgiving we pray. Amen. Depart now from this place of worship. Remember, life is short. Be quick to show kindness and grace to others as Jesus was so willing to be quick to show grace and kindness to others who are despised and rejected, physically and spiritually defeated. Yet he healed them. O come, Emmanuel, God with us, yes. O come, people of God. Let us go forth in peace. Friends, go. <laughs> 